All right, so we're beginning a new chapter, and our first lesson is on exponent properties. So today's target is going to be to simplify expressions using properties of exponents. So we've talked a little bit about exponents before in powers. Um, I just want to review real quick. Three here is called the base, and two here, it's raised to the second power. This is the exponent. So we've covered this earlier in the year. We know that 3 squared, and that's the way we would say this out loud, or we could say 3 to the second power, that's just 3 times 3, or 9. It just means repeated multiplication. Now, a to the third power means a times a times a. What today's lesson is focusing on is how we can combine multiple expressions like this. Here we have a cubed times a to the second. So what I'm going to do is just kind of expand it like we just worked on over here. This would be a times a times a, right? This is a to the third power. And then we have to multiply that by another a times a. This part here is a to the second power. Well, what you notice here is that altogether you've got a to the fifth power. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We're simplifying using properties of exponents. All right, so let's start talking about our ex exponent properties. So our first property is called uh, the product of powers property. Okay, that's the official name of it. But we like to nickname it the addition property because like you just saw in the problem that we worked on right here, we can just add those two exponents to simplify it. So that's what we're going to do here in our example. We have a to the 13th times a to the second power. What we can do is keep the base. So I'm going to rewrite a. So I keep that base, and then I just add the exponents together. 13 plus 2 gives me 15. So when you multiply powers with the same base, all you have to do is add your exponents. So here we have two uh, example problems. We've got x to the 7th power times x to the 2nd. So what I'm going to do is keep the same base, x, and then add the two exponents, 7 plus 2. That gives me 9, so x to the 9th power. On number 2, I want to do the same thing. I see I have z to the negative 5th and z to the 8th. So I'm going to keep the base z, and then I'm going to add negative 5 plus 8. That gives me positive 3. So my final answer here would be z to the 3rd power. Okay, now moving on to our second property. Um, this property is called the power of a power property, and we nicknamed it the multiplication property. So I'm going to guess that we're probably going to be multiplying here. But let me explain why we're going to multiply here instead of add. So this is when we see a power here. So here we've got a to the second power, and it's raised. It's got parentheses around it, and it's raised to another power here, the fourth power. So if I were to rewrite this, I would expand this and say that that's a squared times a squared times a squared times a squared. You see how I have four of them? So it's a squared raised to the fourth power. It's repeated four different times. Well, we know from the last rule that now all we'd have to do is keep the base and add all those exponents up. So I'd have to take 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 to give me a to the 8th power. So instead of having to rewrite this the long way, I can just use the shortcut. When I see a power raised to another power, I just multiply those two numbers. So this gives me a to the 8th power. Okay, so that's the shortcut. We just multiply 2 times 4. So in words right here, when you raise a power to a power, we're going to keep the base, remember we kept a here, and then we're going to multiply the exponents together. Oops, that was a funky looking y, so multiply, there we go. Okay, so we've got two example problems here. In number three, we see y squared raised to the fifth power, okay? So what we're going to do is multiply 2 times 5, and that gives me y to the tenth power. If you're ever unsure about that, you can always expand it. So this would be y squared times y squared times y squared times y squared times y squared. And then you can add up all these exponents. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 should give me y to the 10th power right here. Now in number 4, if I use that same rule again, so we've got a to the 3rd raised to the 9th power here. I'm just going to multiply those two exponents to give me a to the 27th power. So keep your base and then multiply your exponents, and there's your final answer. All right, now we move on to the last rule here, uh, the distributive property. So this is uh, the nickname for it, the distributive property, but its real name is the power of a product property. So this time it looks a little bit more complex. If you look at this, we've got a squared b cubed, and all of that, the whole thing, is raised to the fourth power. 
So if I were to expand that, it would look something like this. a squared b cubed times another a squared b cubed times another a squared b cubed, and then finally multiply by another a squared b cubed. So that's four of those a squared b cubes multiplied together. And again, we can just um, add all these exponents, but that would be really long. Like that, that's going to take us a little bit more work than we have to because we can just use our little shortcut here, which is to distribute that power to both bases. So I'm going to take base A and base B and make sure that I raise the 2 here to the 4th power, which means I would multiply 2 times 4 to get A to the 8th power. And then I'm going to do the same thing with that 4 and this 3 here. I'm going to multiply these together to give me B to the 12th power. So when you raise a product to a power, you raise each base okay, to that power. So you're going to raise each base to the power on the outside. So let's do some example problems to finish it off. So we've got number five here. It says x squared y cubed all raised to the fourth power. So I'm going to distribute that four here to both bases, right? We've got two different bases, x and y. That gives me x to the eighth power, just multiply two times four. And three times four gives me y to the twelfth power. So x to the eighth, y to the twelfth. On number six, the same idea here. I'm going to raise this base A to the 6th power and this base B here to the 6th power also. So in the first one, A cubed to the 6th power, remember you're going to distribute that, you get A to the 18th. Now this next one's a little bit trickier, okay? So let's take a look at that a little closer. When you look at this B, technically there's a little 1 flying up here, right? B to the 1st power is what that really is. So what I'm going to do is multiply 1 times 6 to get b to the 6th power. So that's my final answer here. a to the 18th, b to the 6th. All right, nice job. Tomorrow we're going to work on that warm-up and do some more practice problems, but good job. We'll see you in class tomorrow.